So I'd like to welcome you all. I'd like to welcome everyone who watches the video when it's on YouTube. And I want to talk to you all today about something that is not commonly discussed, but it is very key for all of humanity. It involves how each of us operates within, and we need to understand it because when we understand how this spirit operates, we can overtake it, but it's going to involve warfare. We need to understand what the aim is of this spirit so we can battle it. It operates in both kingdoms on the earth, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. We have to understand where it started. We have to know how to recognize it. And it's located in each one of us. Believers know the spirit, how it operates, or how to be rid of it. So I'm asking you to please pay attention. As in the coming days, the church really needs to know how to deal with this spirit. So today, I want to talk with you about the spirit of defiance. In 2 Thessalonians 2.7, it says, For the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority, and the coming reign of lawlessness is already at work, but it is restrained only until he who now restrains it is taken out of the way. There's a whole lot in that one scripture. Rebellion against divine authority, the coming reign of lawlessness. He who restrains it is taken out of the way. This is telling us that God in us is restraining the enemy's plan. That makes believers pretty important. Amen? For all of the earth. Many people believe that this scripture means when the church is raptured up, removed, that the Holy Spirit is also removed from the earth, but that is not so. The Holy Spirit will remain on the earth because many people during the tribulation, the Holy Spirit will draw them in to salvation. So here is the warfare involved. I want to talk to you about the first advent of both kingdoms. Lucifer was defiant to the plan of God. His first advent on the earth, he rushed into open opposition by planting his way of operating through sin in the bodies of men. Also changing the way around us, how the world operated compared to God's plan. His aim was dominion of the earth and to be worshipped. Jesus's first advent, he came as a child, humble, born in a manger, to reunite us to God by buying us back through the atonement. God's aim is to provide us with all we need, and he has provided us with all we need to overtake the enemy's plan here, now, and for eternity. This involves the whole human race, Emmanuel, God's name. God is with us in presence and in power. This is why the enemy wants the church out of the way. Mystery in scripture means that which does not always remain a secret, but that which is for a time is hidden, but in due time, it manifests. So you following me so far? Just give me a shake of your head. Okay. We need to know where defiance started. God made a plan for creation. Now, Lucifer was one of the high ranking angels. He knew God. He knew about creation. He knew how God operated, but he does not know all about the mystery. That's why this is very important. In the Garden of Eden, disobedience allowed the seed 
of defiance to enter into humanity. It remains in each one of us, generation after generation, because it's hidden and not understood, and sin is corruptible. We can repent for what we know, amen, but there's much we need to understand. We see proof of this in the Bible, where some kings in the Old Testament, they chose to truly love God and obey him to the best of their ability, but we see their children absolutely did not. We, we can look at all the kings that loved God and obeyed him and obeyed God, but even still, there was still defiance in them. Many of them, the good kings, did not take down the high places, or they would obey God just so far. There is a difference between defiance and rebellion. And for us to understand it, we need to recognize our choice for free will. So how do we recognize it? We know God gave us a gift of free will. The enemy wants that gift. Through the Bible, we can recognize that with a choice for free will, defiance is all around us. And without understanding it, even the saved continue to make wrong decisions. The Bible also tells us that even saved, there is a battle around us for our free will, our choice for free will. In fact, in the Bible and in this counseling ministry, I often hear from people, I do what I don't want to do. I don't want to think these thoughts. I don't want to dream these dreams. They don't want to stay addicted. They don't want to keep fighting with their spouses. They don't want to be mean to their children and watch their children be mean to them. They don't want to keep hurting people. They don't want people to continue hurting them. And they don't want to keep disobeying God. I'm talking about saved people. But it is a battle. We have to understand that. Look at David, a man after God's own heart. He loved God, respected God, wrote so many beautiful songs from his heart to God. But he still defied God. He with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah. This is all of us. We're not exempt. The Bible says that David one night looked out on his roof and there was Bathsheba taking a bath and he sent for her and went into her. But I think it's possible he might have seen her more than one time watching from the roof. We have to watch the plans we are making within our being. That is key. What are we planning? What are we thinking about inside of us? So we need to know how this spirit operates so that our giftings are not corrupted. Remember, our choice for free will is a gift. We want our choice for free will to remain free. And our choice remains free in obedience with God. Amen? So think of defiance as a seed. And we're going to name this seed, did God really say? That's what Lucifer said in the Garden of Eden. So that's what we're going to name this seed. Did God really say? That question involves our entire being. It involves our entire species. We can see the mystery of lawlessness manifesting throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament, with the defiance of the fallen angels. You know, they did not just one day decide, ah, I'm going to go work for the other side. It didn't happen like that. They protected and worked the kingdom of heaven eternally. 
for a very long time. Defiance is alive, just like all sin is alive. And it was taken in as they watched the actions of Lucifer eyes. And they listened to his view of the matter, just like Adam and Eve. In fact, rebellion didn't manifest until the angels were convinced to make a choice. What is convincing us to make the choices that we make? One third of the angels rebelled. The other two thirds did not. Choice, very important. The manifestation of defiance is in our choice. We have to pay attention to our choices. Now, I'm sure Lucifer had this all planned out. Think about it. He was a ruling angel. Our words carry seed. Our words carry seed. What did God say? Let there be. And it was. We're created in his image. The devil knows this, okay? Now, he was followed by many angels of lower rankings. And he believed that he could do life the way he wanted apart from God. Do we see this operating in our lives? Think about it. Then mankind is corrupted with seed. Did God really say? And how many questions followed that? But we have a gift. We choose who we will follow. God recommends that we choose life. But we have to understand defiance so we can live an abundant life. Now, God will never mess with our gift. He gave it to us. It's ours. We are also supernatural beings. So Satan knew that he had to corrupt our choice for free will. And how does he do this? I mean, Adam and Eve was a long time ago, yeah? But the Bible shows us the corruption throughout all the generations. Mixture of God and self-reign. Religion, worshiping idols, gain for self, any uncleanness. Satan was aiming for the bloodlines. It's all about the blood because our life is in the blood. He wanted to corrupt the bloodlines because he knew all the prophecies, idols, fornication, anything to make mankind sin. Why? Because he knows God. He knows God cannot go against his own word. So we have to pay attention to God's word. He also wanted us corrupted to overtake us, to overtake our will and harness our supernatural abilities that God wants to use on this earth. Think of a predator. Somebody wants to commit a crime. They think about it. They plan it out. They know what they're going to do. They plan what they're going to do. The predator knows how this operates within them. And they train these abilities to be stealth and efficient. But us sheep here, we need help. We need help. We think. All of this stuff is on the outside of us, and we're spending time trying to do our best to keep everything on the outside out, except it's within us. Thank God for the helper, the Holy Spirit, who wants to train our hands to war. Amen. And praise God for all those strict laws in the Old Testament and the records that were kept in the word. Because the Messiah was born, just as God prophesied. 
because God is still and always will be the only true God. So God knows all about defiance. Its aim is for us to never understand the supernatural ability that God has placed in each of us. I'm talking about besides the Holy Spirit in us. The goal was for us to lose all that God provided for humanity, dominion of the earth from the beginning of time. Why? Because Satan knows he lost. He made the wrong choice. Now his pride will take him and all he can steal, kill, and destroy with him to hell. Hell is real. Heaven is real. My definition of hell is eternal separation from God who created us and loved us more than he loved himself. This is the nature of love. This is the nature of God. And he remains God, all-knowing, all-seeing, ever-present, and all-powerful. The one true living God who is not mocked. He knows and sees all. Amen? So let's understand the aim to reigning. At Jesus' second coming, he overtakes the whole beast system with a breath from his nostril. We have two nostrils. The word says he uses one. Amen? At that time, Satan will be chained in a pit for a thousand years during the millennium reign. God will be on the earth with us. We return with him. And during that time, there will be no sickness, no disease. There will be peace. We will dwell on the earth with God. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. The lion and the lamb together as one. Imagine. But after a thousand years, Satan again will be released from the pit. This is his second advent. And guess what happens? Mankind, many, again, will side with the devil, wanting self-reign, defiance to the authority of God for self-reign. He will again deceive the nations. They will march against the saints, and the fire of heaven will come down, consume them, and then Satan will be thrown in the lake of fire, tormented forever. Revelations 20. Can we imagine defying the all-powerful God? We see how blatant Satan does it. We need to see how this operates in us. Do we understand sin is our enemy? It's not just something that's optional. It is alive. And it is an enemy. And can we see a little bit now how defiance operates with sin? And do we understand our gift of repentance and thank God for it? So defiance is located within us and around us, just like God. Imagine that, Holy Spirit in us, God ever present around us. See the counterfeit? We do not understand our supernatural ability. There is great power on the inside of us. Satan knew if we were corrupted, we also would have to choose. So this is war. How will we use our God-given supernatural ability? If you say to your mind, you will not think that thought again. What do you think will happen? <laughs> you will immediately think that thought, thought again, maybe two or three times, because our supernatural ability within us, if we don't know how to use it and harness it, it will even bully us, okay? What if you tell your will, 
you will exercise every morning, you will fast twice a week, and if you behave yourself, I will let you have a cup of coffee every day. What do you think would happen after that? <laughs> You're going to want more coffee than ever just for starters on that day, yeah? What about our hearts? Now pay attention. God wants us to love him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. What about our hearts? The one created to receive God's love, to return God's love, and to spread God's love throughout the world. I learned during my 30 years of affliction, the heart is truly the most deceitful thing there is and it is desperately wicked jeremiah 17 9 it will pull every bit of your supernatural ability to convince your mind your will your soul your emotions your attitudes your strength and your flesh to agree with what it wants. So, I mean, to put my point across here, we are right now in training to rule with Christ in the millennium, mm -hmm. to rule with love. The tribulation believers that survive, who will still have their physical bodies and still have sinful natures. Amen. We need to understand this now. So defiance is not always noticeable. Take a sleeping infant. How absolutely beautiful. Defiance is not fully operating within that infant, but it is hidden within that soul, the mind, the emotions, the strength, and the flesh, the behavior of that infant as it grows. The behavior of those raising that child, the behavior of those around that child, outside of the family, in the community, how will that infant respond? Think about it. And why will it respond that way? Will the child obey the rules, respect the parents, or undermine them, or a little of both? This is defiance. Watch how it moves. Will it blame others? And how do people react when we blame them? This involves all of us. Defiance makes other people uncomfortable. We have discernment in our bellies. Amen. It puts strain on relationships. And then before you know it, defiance will have us in groups trying to fit in. Do you see this in the world today? Will we hold grudges? Think about the choice and how we get there. Will we hold grudges? Why? Do we really respect authority, even if we don't agree with it? God's not mocked. He knows exactly how we think, and he loves us. Amen? But we need to understand it. You know, many times we read about Christians, lukewarm, hot, cold. I think defiance is what keeps people on the fence. Do we thoughtfully and in the word of God consider the consequences of our actions? Or do we just run ahead, straightforward in opposition? Do we contemplate how many others will be affected by the results of our choices? Will that child become hostile as it grows older? Argumentative. Does it see people argumentative around us in the world? Some people love to confront people and be in control. Others do not like it at all. Relationships are strained. We're supposed to be one body in Christ, in unity, amen? And disunity cuts deep. One of the fears the devil has, if there was ever unity in the body of Christ, he wouldn't stand a chance. Now, think about this child has grown up, doesn't understand its supernatural ability. And the supernatural ability is wounded. What will that do in that child's choice for their free will? 
their path in life will not be as clear. And now look beyond that child into the world and look at the effects of just this one scripture. So if we don't know how to deal with defiance, it's more than likely already operating in us and we have opened many doors, even through our generations. This was Satan's plan to infect the generations with those seeds of defiance against the authority of God. So it starts when we're very young. We're bombarded. Our parents were bombarded. Grandparents were bombarded. You know, have, have any of you watched a kid's cartoon lately? It's like there's a good person who wants to fix the broken. And then there's the broken who wants everyone else to tag along with them. Amazing. So let's watch how defiance moves spiritually. So now spiritually, we can begin to fathom the mess in and around us. Yet, thank God, we are saved. We get saved. And after salvation, we begin to be transformed. See why? Have you ever seen a person get saved and life is just a bed of roses after that? No arguing. No fighting, children never disobeying the parents. You're not going to see that. We don't see it in the Bible either. I think the next step after salvation should be deliverance and baptism. And then we can have our eyes open enough to see what God is truly trying to say to us, why He put everything in place, why He recorded it all. We read the Bible. Oh my gosh, why does he go on and on and on and on and on about the generations and the laws and the this and who did that? This is why it's still happening today. Now, many believers, they believe God, they have the Holy Spirit, but their choice for free will is covered in the fruits of defiance. Some days it operates. Some days it doesn't. Some days it's a mystery. We don't think that, you know, there's a problem. We're saved. But God is still with us in the race, bringing us all home. Amen. He wants to train us to war with him on the earth. And we pray. We pray for those who are already saved to specifically move these coverings and their benefits and their habits and make us look at why we do the things we do and are they really lining up with God and what are those plans we have going on inside of us. So here's Satan on top of all that he harnessed by stealing, killing, and destroying, standing on top of this mountain of darkness. How he used people to speak spells and crafts and give them the fallen, their supernatural power. And then we see it only took one angel to throw him in the pit. One. One. You will know why? Because Jesus took their power. We need to understand that. The only time, the only way they get power is when we give it to them. Whether we know it or we don't know it. Agreeing, speaking, mm, not standing up for things God wants us to stand up for. And then there's Jesus. He gave us his authority his Holy Spirit, his life blood, his resurrection power, along with his last will and testament, the Bible. God is here with us in presence and in power. Why? To continue the work of salvation and redemption. So here's how defiance operates in both kingdoms. In the kingdom of heaven, we defy 
everything on this earth by believing in God that we have never laid our physical eyes upon. We believe as we read his word. We learn about him. He gave us the history of creation, the history of the generations, the history of religion, how the father made all the laws in the Old Testament and why, and the promises of the Messiah who came in the New Testament, who atoned for our sins. We have the history of the Holy Spirit coming into the believers and the works that were done, the works that are still supposed to be being done. And we daily experience our life with God here and now and forever through our relationship with him. Here's the dark kingdom. Defiance moves on the inside. The hidden plans, the deep, the dark, what they've got planned for humanity next. They're planning for that outward manifestation. But what they really want is our faith. They want our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. We are reigning right here and now on the earth with God. Training, learning, experiencing with God how we will behave on the earth right now, as we will in heaven. That's what we're being trained about. We're not going to be lying, having all these crazy plans in heaven. And we're training right now how to rule and reign with Christ in the millennium. Many people believe we are in the very last days. Amen. It's time to get ready. Get ready. So with God, nothing is impossible. Miracles, healings, deliverance, restoration. Heaven is living, present within each of us. Within each of us. So we have to recognize defiance and how it moves in our supernatural power to bring doubt and unbelief, did God really say? Hmm. It wants to drain our hope, people of God. It wants to make us believe we are the underdogs living a mundane life. Many sick, many demonized, just waiting to go to heaven, missing the whole point of what we're supposed to be doing here while we're alive. Defiance wants us to look at what we see and believe this is God's plan. Even if you're sick, even if you're demonized, but God, he wants us to overtake what we see and release God's plan. See the difference? We are treasured by God, but we are not God. Hallelujah. Personally, I wouldn't want the job. We are beloved by God. Do not defy God or his authority because Satan still wants to steal. And remember, Satan knows who the one true God is, and he knows it's not him. But if he can steal even just a little of the abundance God gave to us, he's going to go for it. So to conclude, Satan and the dark kingdom, they know who God is, but they will continue to defy us. And God, our God-given authority, until we awaken to who we truly are and take back our supernatural ability by understanding it so we can choose to keep our will free in Jesus and all that the Father and the Holy Spirit has provided for us. So to be rid of it, we have to watch what we are planning 
on the inside and never for a moment take for granted that your mind will emotions your soul your flesh your being has a plan it wants its own way i know that may seem hard to believe yeah mm. until you're almost dead lying on a bed and your flesh says i'm going to heaven mm. and your strength says i'm going with them Mm. and your heart thinks it's the boss wants to control it all mm. but the soul is the key what does your soul want you know many times my soul was ready just die go to heaven what do you want to stay here for think about this this is power this is supernatural power inside of us but my little spirit thank god i was in the word didn't want to die. It didn't have to die. But my spirit had to take control of my soul, my mind, my heart, and my flesh. And honestly, what God taught me then, it's the key. Why I'm here. Why I'm here. We have heaven, every miracle, everything we need right inside of us. We have to harness that supernatural ability. It has to be controlled by our spirits. And we have to watch what we're planning and how we're thinking and what we're seeing and how it's affecting us. Hmm. Because the self and control is very powerful, very powerful. When we hear and think of these plans, is it a godly plan? Does it line up with the word of God? Are we bringing these plans to the Lord? We want to build a house on a firm foundation, not on sinking sand. So we want to be have our choice for free will in agreement with God's will. Amen. Okay, so let's pray. Father God, we thank you for training us. Train us, Lord, in our supernatural life. Train us now, Lord. We want to experience it now. We don't want to wait till heaven. Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask that you search us, that you know us, that you soak us in the power of the atonement, releasing the same power that you release to bring Jesus back to life, Lord overtake defiance in us we don't even know how deep it's ingrained in us lord we ask that you burn out every graven image that we are in control there's only one god and it's not us use that staff lord father clear our paths we want to be used mightily by you now. We want to release the supernatural ability you have inside of us, Lord, in union with your will. Father, we repent for it all. We want to live as citizens of heaven right now, but we need you to do that. We come to you, Lord, as sinners, still sinners, even saved, Lord. Father, everywhere that we've opened doors, that we've allowed defiance, show us in our ancestors, Lord, everywhere we can see defiance, Father. We don't want it anymore. We want to humbly obey you. We want you in fullness within us, being released in this world. Make us realize, Holy Spirit, how short our time on this earth is. What is our legacy going to be for the kingdom of heaven? Eternal legacy. We have no idea what happens when we pray. 
if we did, we would pray more. We have no idea what happens when we obey God because it affects the entire body. So train us, Holy Spirit. We love you. We thank you that you care for us. You want us healed, our souls whole. And we want to go forth and teach others what you're training us. So we give you all the glory. And Father, everywhere that we've messed up, everywhere that the enemy gained ground on us, let us use that as a stepping stone. Let us put our feet right on top of our mistakes that are uncovered and walk higher into the knowledge of God and how he operates. Amen. JesusTodayMinistries.org. We are here to minister and to pray with you right in the comfort of your own home or your office. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. Hi, my name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, Please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at JesusTodayMinistries.org. You can get to know more about me there. And please remember to read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States, as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or Viber. I look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.